Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be building Trumpeter's MiG-23 MLD. We start off with the cockpit, which we paint in Soviet interior turquoise by Mr. Color. I then moved on to the ejection seat, which I painted in light ghost grey, and the seat cushion in khaki. Um, I then added a black pin wash, and I also painted the photo edge seat belt in black and silver. And this was the ejection seat before the pin wash, and here it is after. This is finally before putting it into the cockpit. Over here we can see it put into the cockpit tub, and as you can see I started with the decal process just to add the buttons. I also painted the stick and did the red button was just using a fine tip brush. The decals went on really well, I just made sure to use a good decal solution. This was also basically the finished cockpit, and after this I could then move on to the exhaust section. I painted the inside in, I think it was light grey by Tamiya, and then I painted the fans and the afterburner rings in silver and that same turquoise green from earlier. I could then get started with putting the fuselage together, which unfortunately I did lose some footage from, and it was quite a fight to get it together. It did require quite a bit of putty and sanding, as you can see I've done here, but in the end it came together decently well. The wing roots needed even more putty, which I just used Tamiya putty and dissolved it with some lacquer thinner and wiped away this with a cotton swab. After putting the fuselage together, I could then mask off the cockpit and it was almost ready for priming. I just had to do a little bit more putty in the back and I primed over it just to see that it was looking decently smooth. I couldn't get it perfect, but I was decently happy enough. Considering I was planning to do this plane in a somewhat abandoned slash abused form, I wasn't too fussed about making it perfectly smooth. I then just attached on the nose cone and did a little bit more putty to fix the fit there and primed over it to make sure that it was smooth. The final piece of assembly before painting was then the gun which just required some PE bending and I just super glued it into place. It was then finally time to start priming. I use Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 by Mr. Hobby in black. It's my favorite primer. I don't think there's a better one in the market in my opinion. It really just gives a really smooth finish and it's a great 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 thing for paint to adhere to. This is what the MIG then looked like after priming. I can also see what the wing mechanism was looking like and how the plane was somewhat going to look. I was really happy with how this was turning out. After that I then masked off the wheelbase to paint them which in hindsight wasn't really necessary but I did it anyways. I then somewhat pre-shaded it and I proceeded to paint the whole thing in light coast grey as can be seen here. After that I just added a brown and black wash to dirty it up a bit. It was then masked off and I could proceed to adding the base layer. I started with silver at the top um, which will be exposed with some chipping later on and I also added some light green based on a reference or two I saw. So. This was the process of me doing that here. And this is what it looked like before painting the main camo. I could then start off with the main camo. I used Tamiya Buff and Tamiya JGSDF Brown. Um, the camo was just free handed on, which I didn't record the first two colors but you can see me use the green over here to finish the camo off. I'm not sure why I can't find the videos of me doing this because I'm pretty sure I did add them. Um, and also underneath the paint I added chipping fluid which I activated with water and a toothpick over here by the wings and the top. And yeah, I then added some dark gray to the nose and to the tail and decided to mask the bottom to paint in light grey. 
and this is effectively how the plane was looking after finishing the whole painting process. Um, I was really happy with how this was coming out at this point, although I was a little bit scared that the lack of pre-shading was going to result in a very bland looking paint, but I can I do something later to fix that. Over here you can just see me unmasking the wheel wells, which is pretty satisfying. In order to combat that lack of pre-shading, which I mentioned previously, I decided to do some post-shading. I effectively just used a lightened version of each color, um, which in this case was light gray mixed with some white, and I just used a low pressure on the airbrush and mottled in each panel. It's not immediately obvious at this angle, which I think is due to the lighting, but you can very clearly see it in other angles and at the top side. Over here you can see what it looked like after all the fading, which I was really quite thrilled with. I then masked off the rear exhaust section, um, which I believe I first primed in black and then started with um, titanium. You can see here is the black base and you will see me paint the metallic bits after this. And there it is. I was really quite happy with how this looked and I think it was close enough to the real thing. I also painted the actual exhaust nozzle in the same way and then I masked off this part like this to paint the underside bits of the turkey feather so to speak in I think this was dark iron. Um, the overall result was pretty good in my opinion. I was really happy with how it turned out. Here is how the exhaust looked like on the jet. Um, I didn't go overboard with any of the heat effects or anything, but I was happy with how it looked. I then masked off and painted the intakes on the jet in light grey, or it could have even been light coast grey, because some of the references I saw had them like that. I then used some black oil and um, just streaked it onto the exhaust for some weathering. Um, I wasn't really thrilled with how this looked, and I think I would do it a little bit differently next time, but it certainly didn't look bad. I could then start by putting the landing gear together, which you can see here, and then I painted them in the same light ghost grey that I used for the landing gear bays, which I believe was the correct colour. Um, I also put together the little wheel guard thing that a lot of Russian jets have behind the front wheels and it just had some little PE accents that I added on with super glue. I then could start also painting the wheels um, which I did in black and I think the wheels themselves were green. I also just added the silver accents to the struts on the wheels over here. Not the wheels, the wheel legs. This is how it was pretty much looking, and there's what the wheels look like after being glued into place. I was pretty happy with how it looked. And based on the references I saw, that little guard that's behind the front wheels was painted in silver, which is probably not perfect, but it looked decent to me. I could then start by painting the wheel bay doors, which was just in the same light grey used for the underside and then I glued the fin into place, which I later realized had to actually be put to the side because the MiG-23, when it's in this you know, ground position, that fin would actually hit the ground. I also just glued on the countermeasures and I could finally start by adding a gloss coat to get ready for decals. The process I used to apply decals was pretty simple, I just started with a gloss coat and then I applied Tamiya Mark Fit to the area where the decal needed to go on. The decal was then soaked in warm for water for a couple seconds and then it just transferred from the decal paper onto the model and I removed the excess water with a cotton swab. I then um, applied another gloss coat over the decals and I also added some paint over all the decals to basically fade it a bit to make it look a little bit more worn. I could then begin with the ordinance, as you can see me starting over here, um, and the fuel tank as well. I basically primed all of the ordinance in that same Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 black, 
and then I could move on to painting them in the correct colors afterwards. This was how the fuel tank looked like after priming and here is what all the ordnance looked like together after priming and it was now ready for some paint. I started off by painting the pylons in light ghost grey and after that I then moved on to the weapons themselves. I painted the missiles just using some Tamiya white. I had to do quite a few layers in order to make it not look grey over the black base. Um, yeah, I think in the future I would probably do a grey primer for the weapons because it would require a lot less layers of paint to make it actually look white. I painted the base of the fuel tank in the same light grey as the underside of the jet and freehanded the camera in the exact same way I did the jet itself. And this was how the fuel tank looked like after painting, which was pretty cool in my opinion. You don't see many jets with a fuel tank like that. I used the same decal process as earlier to put all the decals on the weapons themselves and this was how it was looking. I then applied a varnish to the, all the weapons and the ordnance and used some super glue to put them onto the model. After that it was basically done and here are the finished pictures of the model itself. <laughs> 